All right, I'm ready to go. Okay, so everyone, uh, welcome. Thanks for showing up to the Third Island Door Online. I, the previous uh, presentations have been kind of developer focused, which I think is actually quite appropriate. Uh, usually you will need some development help to migrate. Um, but I'm trying to give more of a broad level overview of just what's currently out there and pros, cons, why you would pick one over the other type deal. And just to highlight um, a couple extra things that are out there in the community kind of floating around that you could use that we haven't talked about yet. So your current migration options, uh, as it stands right now, there's really kind of three paths that I'll talk about. You can use the REST API, um, you can use the Migrate API, or you could use Island or Workbench. And so I'll just kind of go through those, those three things in turn. Um, and I acknowledge that some of this stuff has probably already been mentioned, so I, I might skip through some slides pretty quickly. So why use the REST API? Um, so this is, I would say, the most uh, time intensive way of migrating, but it still totally works and is, uh, you know, the basis of, you know, decoupled Drupal, right? Stuff like that. So why use the REST API? Well, it works anywhere. Um, you can use it on your computer, which is um, good if you don't have shell access. You don't have to use PHP for anything. Um, you can use any language. Um, pretty much every language out there has some kind of library for making an HTTP request. Um, you can even just use the command line tool like curl. I have used curl and bash and just piped JSON files to Drupal, no problem. Um, works great. Um, and also uh, it uses JSON. So the REST API uses uh, you know, depending on if you use Drupal core rest or Drupal JSON API, there's slightly different formats, but nonetheless, it's all essentially just Drupal JSON. So um, custom maybe bespoke or specific to Drupal, uh, but easy to understand and work with. And, you know, certainly JSON is a very civil data format to work with. Um, so bonus, just like I said, this actually is just the Drupal REST API. There actually really isn't a whole lot extra that we do. So we do two extra endpoints, um, essentially for you to update, upload, or replace um, data streams. That's really it. So if you already have a media, you can replace its file contents. And if you already have a node and you wanna add a new media to it, then there's just a second endpoint and you just put your contents there. Um, and it wires everything up for you, makes the file, makes the media, associates it with the node and does it. We're actually looking to phase these out too. So hopefully, fingers crossed, we can just use the core Drupal ways to do this because we wrote all this stuff before you can upload files through Drupal REST endpoints. Um, and if we can do that, then we're just essentially hands off and we just lower our technical debt and use the sweet, sweet toolage that, uh, that the Drupal community gives us. So just be aware though, I said this was the most time intensive, intensive. You are writing everything yourself. Maybe that's a bit misleading. I would, should say maybe you are making all of the decisions yourself. Um, you know, you're not on your own building an HTTP client from scratch, right? Like there's, there's libraries and frameworks you can use for this sort of thing. Um, but you are in charge of all of that. So it's uh, lots of freedom, which can be great or it can be terrifying. Kind of depends on your, on your look at it. Um, so if you, if you don't want to be kind of on your own, um, then the second option is to use the Drupal 8 Migrate API. It is an API providing services for migrating data from a source system to Drupal. That source system can be essentially anything. Um, Islandora 7, a WAC of scans and a CSV, uh, a web API. Uh, it could also just be a directory as we found out there was a plugin earlier. So pretty much like anything and in any format it can, it can handle. Um, you essentially define uh, your entire migration in a configuration entity, which means that you can do everything within some fairly simple-ish YAML files. Um, there's lots of contrib modules for doing lots of things, so you're not necessarily recoding any wheels. Um, and if you need to make your own plugin to say process or transform data, it's really simple. I mean, essentially you just make a function and then it's just a boilerplate class that you wrap it in and you have a processor, a custom processor. Um, and then running 
the metadata running the, the migration. Uh, you know, you just say Drush Mim and then you, you give it the name of your migration and you go. You can pass it in an update flag and update it as in that command there, but um, it's, it's, it's pretty easy to use. So uh, this was mentioned in previous slides, ETL, extract, transform, and load. You got to pull the data from somewhere, you got to mush it into shape, and then you got to shove it in, you know, where you want it, right? So that's ETL. And if you look at a migration YAML file, this is probably a little tiny on your screen, but um, aside from some kind of information in the headers at the top, uh, it, it pretty much directly correlates with extract, transform, and load. That's the source process and destination aspects of the plugins. Um, and once you've gone through and configured this migration, it is quite easy to run. So the hard part is constructing the migration. Once you actually have it, um, then you can just run it uh, in Drush. You can do it in batches and offset, and it's pretty smart to know what is updated and what hasn't. If you go change the source and rerun the migration, it will update the ones that have been changed, stuff like that. Um, so pretty easy to deal with if you're comfortable with, with the command line. Um, and so instead of just jumping straight into the migrate API, which can be uh, a bit terrifying to some people, um, we have some tools already there to help you. So migrate island or CSV is essentially really more than anything else is a tutorial for how to use the migrate API. Um, with regard to CSVs, but you know, aside from some stuff in the source um, header kind of section of it, there's a lot of this that's still very applicable to just the Migrate API in general. Um, and one of the reasons why people find the Migrate API so difficult is that it's not really well documented within the Drupal community. So that tutorial there is actually one of the best documentation sources you have um, on the Migrate framework. Um, we also wrote Migrate 7x Claw, which is very specifically tailored to pull your stuff out of Islandor 7x and get it into Islandor 8. Um, unfortunately, it was written when we still called the project Claw, so that's like our last Claw reference dangling. Um, so Migrate Islandor CSVs, it's probably the easiest thing to start at if you're looking at using the Migrate API. Uses CSVs, which everyone understands. Uh, like I mentioned before, it's well documented. It's a step-by-step -step tutorial. Um, it's one of the only places on the internet where you will find one of these. Um, using the Migrate API in general means that you're willing to transform or process the data as it goes, which means that you can deal with dirty metadata um, if you have to. It doesn't have to be pristine on the way in. You can actually uh, mush things into shape before they get, they get loaded. And the migrations, they can reference each other and you can create stuff on the fly if you have to. So if, you, if you're going and it finds a new you know, subject in the subject column that it's never seen before, um, it'll go and generate it for you automatically. So you can, you can check that out. It is uh, a module, essentially a feature that you download and import the feature and then you can read the tutorial and, and walk through it and it steps you through each of the pieces this is also, again, been mentioned several times, but there is an order in which you have to import things. Um, and so it, it steps you through that, like files first, then the nodes, then the medias to kind of, to wire it all together. Um, but if you're coming from 7X, um, then that, that approach won't work for you. So, you know, it's very important to the Island Door Foundation uh, that we move everyone forward from seven into eight to get you off of Fedora three and into a into a current Fedora. Um, and so we wrote this tool, which has seen some use, although we're hoping it will get more use and then we can continue to improve and build upon it. But, um, you know, essentially just as a top level overview, if you run this tool and you use it, you will get all of your data streams. So all of your data streams will come over as individual media. You will also get the audit trail. That's like a special one that we had to do some, some special stuff to get. Um, you can't get it through Fedora 3's REST API the exact same way. Um, so, but you will get all of your data streams. So you're not leaving anything behind. 
okay, first off. Um, and when you work with your metadata, you are kind of charged with extracting the bits that you need and transforming it into, um, into Drupal fields. But even if you didn't do that, you will still have all of your stuff. So I'm not gonna, uh, you know, use air quotes and call it a quote unquote lossless migration, um, but you're gonna have everything. You're not gonna be missing out. And you can certainly always just take all of your stuff and then slice versions of it and be like, this is where I started, right? Um, the metadata, when you migrate it, it works off two sources. So you can either pull from solar for flat data, which I'll talk about here in a second, or if you need to work with the hierarchical XML, because as like Alexander, you know, mentioned earlier, when you flatten stuff into solar, then all of a sudden you have these kind of disjointed bits of data floating around. But if you still need them preserved in their structure when you're working with it to sort out what's what and what goes where, then you can use XPaths and work off of XML. So this will work with any XML data stream. It does work with your mods um, right now to try to do some things. And, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but you know, lastly, this whole thing is customizable. So this is, again, this is a starting point. We cannot possibly write something that will handle every single use case, but we can try to give you the most generic thing we can. Um, and then you can, you can build from that and hopefully you just have to tailor it less. So everyone will have to change something, but hopefully everyone also has to only change a little bit and no one is left building all of this up from the ground up. So you configure it when you run it, you pass it your creds, you know, you point it to your Fedora, you point it to your old, to your old Fedora, to your old solar, um, you provide it credentials. And then at the bottom there, you can't really see it, but there's a RELSX query that's all big and long. Essentially the way this thing works is that you provide it a query in solar. It uses that query to get the list of PIDs and then each of the migrations are run on all of those PIDs. So there's kind of a, a first step that you have to provide, which is just telling me what you want to migrate. So you can migrate things, you know, a collection at a time or an object at a time. If you're just trying to test things out before you go star colon star and it just like slurps the whole thing, you know, in. Um, so essentially each PID that it gets, each migration within the, the, the tool basically says what it, it's going to do. So some say, I want the solar document for this PID, get me that, I'm gonna work with that. Others say, give me the Foximal for this PID, I'm gonna work with that. And, and so um, you essentially declare if you're going to work with the flat data or the hierarchical data, um, as you're going and you can make multiple passes and you can do bits and pieces of each. It's not like it all has to be done in one shot or anything like that. Um, this thing will make several, several passes over your XML metadata to run all the X paths to do everything um, that you need to do. But, you know, there's a lot, there's a big learning curve with the Migrate API, but if you can just kind of like put the horse blinders on, um, essentially, if you know what your stuff is in solar, and you know what your fields are in Drupal, they can very easily be lined up. So we're only talking about the flat data here. Um, you know, some of this still came from mods, but I don't need to know, you know, the attribute or relationship of some XML bit in with regards to other things. You know, I just know that this was the mods identifier, this was the mod subtitle, et cetera, et cetera. And so you can just map all that over from the you know, there's a section that where you declare your source and then there's a section where you declare uh, the destination and, and those more or less line up one to one when you're working with solar. So it's pretty easy if you're willing to just like, okay, just, just don't try to comprehend everything that's going on because it's a ton. Um, and I just do this and that, you know, at a very naive level, you can line things up pretty easily. So that doesn't always work out. So sometimes you need that hierarchy. Um, and so built into the migrate framework is a lot of stuff for working with XML. Um, you can provide it X paths and have it extract stuff that way. So here's an example of us creating a person uh, agent from the name uh, part of the mods. So you can see here where we've got an item selector that's an X path that says, give me you know, all of the name elements where the attribute type is personal. And then here you see we extract you know, a field from it. We just say mods name part there. So it's 
um, everything is essentially relative to this item selector here. So then here's just an additional XPath. And then we say, hey, you know what? We're gonna make a uh, taxonomy term entity and it's a person and we're gonna extract the name and it's gonna go from here to there. So this is the simplest kind of example that I can give you of working with XML metadata, but you can. So a lot of stuff we've built, it's all tailored towards kind of vanilla Island or seven and vanilla mods. But if you have PD core or something else, you know, there's, there's absolutely nothing stopping you from using this tool right now. You just make another migration for your special type of data stream. And then, you know, you're essentially just like with solar, it's just slightly different. You know, you just basically declare your list of XPaths and then you declare what fields they go into. So to make all of this stuff work, okay, you need access, obviously, to both your Islandora 7 and 8 installs. This is actually the biggest stumbling point for most people um, right off the gates. Usually there is some um, exactable policy rejecting, you know, REST access if you're not from the local host or something like that. So, you know, check your exactable policies and stuff. But, you know, you basically need to make sure that you can uh, use the REST API to pull out Foximal from your Fedora 3. If you can do that, then you can use this tool. Um, also, you need, you know, an Island or an 8 instance that's configured to receive this stuff. Um, you need to know the Migrate API to an extent. You don't need to know everything, but you need to know some. Um, and that is a bit treacherous for people when they're first starting. So, um, you know, it's just, it's a rather steep learning curve and it's not super well documented. Again, we, we try to document it as best we can and, and give it back, but you know, if you're just looking on drupal.org for stuff, there's not a ton of stuff in there other than what's for moving from Drupal 7 to 8 with their wizard. Um, you also need to understand configuration entities and how to work with them. You know, there you don't have to be on the command line um, and editing everything in Vim, so to speak, but you know, you need to either know how to do it through the UI or know how to FTP stuff over so you can edit it locally and, and move it over and stuff like that. And if you know how features works, you know, that's really just, um, something there to help you. It's not necessary, but if you know how features work, then you know you can essentially just SCP the file over, FTP the file over, and then just re-import the feature, and it will it will accept the changes that you've made. And although you can run this through the user interface, um, this is really best done with with the command line. It's really best done with with Drush, and so you just use Drush to run you know everything. So you need to be mildly comfortable with that, right? Like you need to have some shell access to your Islander 8 server and you need to be able to run to run Drush, um, which isn't for everyone. So I'm aware of that. Um, Migrate API is super powerful, saves you a lot of technical debt. You don't have to write your own stuff to parse XML files. You don't have to write your own stuff to talk to solar servers. You don't have to, you know, like a lot of stuff is taken care of for you, but it's still fairly developer focused, developer oriented. Um, it is configuration in YAML, which is fantastic. It's not code, but you still are essentially scripting in YAML. So it's sort of something to keep in mind. There is a, a general, you know, lather, rinse, repeat workflow of trying to change this file. Did it work? Yes, no, okay. You know, and just you just keep repeating and adjusting until you get it sorted out. Islandora Workbench is more tailored to just an end user. So it's a migration tooling that's not built using the Migrate API, but it's actually built using the REST API, um, which means it runs on your computer, which is great. It handles the CSVs and you know a pile of scans use case. So it's we're back to using CSVs with this, and it's a Python script. So it is in theory cross cross platform. Although I haven't tried it on a Windows machine, I'm a I'm a Linux user, but it is Python, um, and it's great because you know. It's opinionated. Um, there's much less configuration. You don't have to write several YAML migration configs. It is a very small, short YAML configuration file where you just give it some real basic stuff because it's opinionated, which means that it's kind of made some decisions for you. We'll talk about that more in a minute here. Um, there is no processing. So it does not transform the data. You have to have the data in the right format and it does expect a particular format because it is opinionated. Um, it can do any right operations so you can create, update or delete content. Um, it's a little bit better than the Migrate API in the sense that you don't have to have used 
the migrate API first or anything. So migrate can update stuff, but only if you got it in in the first place using migrate. If you never did that, it has absolutely no idea, you know, what that node is or what you're talking about. Workbench can deal with that. As long as you know the ID, you can just go and write a single line CSV and say, update this and it'll, it'll go. Um, and in general, this has the bumpers on. So uh, the process for working it isn't try this and fail, try this and fail, try this and fail. It is a nicer version of that, which is try this and then run the script, which will actually check to see if everything is okay first before you say run it and ingest five things and then it fails on the sixth thing or something like that, right? So it's got those, it's got those bumpers on. And just in general, you just have to make less decisions. So kind of the basics, um, column names or field names. Uh, if you've got commas in your value, wrap it in quotes. Multiple values are pipe delimited and any references are done by passing in the numeric ID. So this is, you know, you can very quickly fill out base metadata with this. And all of this stuff is done available with migrate, you know, Island or CSV as well, but uh, multiple values are pipe delimited. Well, in Workbench, you just put the pipes in your CSV and you just go. If you're using migrate Island or CSV, then you actually have to write in your migration, like, okay, split this on the pipe and then take these different parts and then use each part for this thing. And so you actually have to like tell it what you're doing every step of the way. This is already done for you. Just want multi-valued fields, separate them with pipes. Um, it works with taxonomy terms. So you can use a term ID, you can give it a term name, um, or you can mix and match both. And if you're using multiple vocabularies, then you just prefix um, the term name with the vocabulary ID. So here I've got an example of, I have a cat and dog vocabularies. Um, so you can just have, here's multi-values using two different taxonomy terms from two different vocabularies and applying it into one field. Um, and terms that don't exist can be created. So you can make things on the fly, just like you can with the Migrate ABI. Uh, it also handles other field types natively. So I know like Jonathan Hunt uh, has some stuff to work with typed relations. Um, this makes very similar assumptions and you need to format things very similarly. Um, but so you can actually create, um, if you have a taxonomy term, you can assign that taxonomy term to a type relation field, and then you can actually give it the predicate as well. So here, if like say Danny Lamb is, is taxonomy term 30, then we can say, you know, relators colon, photographer colon, you know, Danny, if we're describing a picture, right? And um, just by changing that middle part there, you can essentially change, you know, the mark relator for it. And you're not forced to use relators. I'm just using that because that's the kind of common thing that, that people use it for now. So you can totally, you know, dynamically set up what the RDF predicate is for this relationship all within the CSV. It also works for geolocation fields, just kind of a got you. You got to wrap it in quotes there because there's a comma separating the, separating the Latin long. Um, and it also does page content. So you can certainly use all the other things to do page content as well, but this has kind of standard conventions for ingesting page content. So if you don't care about page level metadata, you can just stick all the metadata on the parent. And then it is an exercise of essentially naming the files a certain way and putting them in a directory. So if you just have a directory, um, the, it's assumed that you hyphenate your words and it expects that the last thing after a hyphen before the extension um, is essentially a page number. And so you just kind of encode the page numbers into the file names and away you go. And it will just slurp all that stuff and put it in. Um, you can also, if you want page level metadata, uh, you can do that and you essentially just create now a sparse kind of CSV where your parent you know, maybe doesn't have all the columns filled out. Um, and then underneath the parent, you just put the children. And you can do multiple books at once. So you can be like, here's a book, and then here's all the pages. And then the next row, here's another book. And then here's all the pages for that. And so you just do it, you just do it that way. Um, I don't wanna get, I know I'm strapped for time already and I'm probably gonna have questions. So I don't want to, to go into uh, big details here, but I will say, um, check it out, check out the README. Most of what I said here is in, is in the README. Um, you can run this. It's a lot easier to get up and running and set up essentially if, if you have Python 
there's a little startup script that he's got with it where you just say run setup and it will use pip to pull down all the packages, et cetera, and then go. And then you can just run it kind of as per the instructions. So it's pretty straightforward and easy uh, to get going. I don't, I don't have a slide for this, but I will mention that this is the basis of the Islandora Workbench uh, desktop tool that's kind of out there in the community that's still in very, very prototypical state. Um, but essentially, we take this tool and are wrapping it in an Electron JS app so that you actually have a little spreadsheet editor. And so you can, we're kind of, you know, aiming to compete with Content DM and their, their spreadsheet tool. So, so again, these are, these are the options that you have. Um, what works best for you is really up to your circumstances and what you feel comfortable with. If you don't like Drupal and PHP, then just, you know, throwing it at the rest endpoint is totally fine, totally works. Um, if you want to try to use those Drupal tools, then the Migrate API is good, especially if you're uh, a developer or just a very, you know, technically minded person. Um, you know, you can, you can just use that. And if you really don't want to deal with any of this stuff, or I don't want to deal with all of these decisions, and I just want someone to have the bumpers on and just, just, just give me a spreadsheet and tell me to go change this. Um, if you're in that mindset, um, then definitely check out Workbench. It is the lowest barrier to entry for migrating into Islandora, and it handles all of our types now, um, which is great. So, so yeah, so I'll just, I'll leave it at that here. Um, I'm not even sure where I am at time here. I can't find my clock, so, uh, but I'll just, I'll yield the floor now to any questions uh, you want to throw at me. Right. We've got time for one question before we turn it over to the next session, and there is one question. Uh, when you started talking about the Migrate 7x tool, I think you said something like, if you're on 7x, the CSV tool won't work for you. Could you clarify what you meant by that? And can you clarify what you mean by saying that you can migrate page content using all the Migrate tools, and what additional work that would entail for Migrate 7x or, migra or Migrate CSV? So all you really have to do to work with those is you just, you know, in the tutorials, we have some assumptions that you're like, you're working with images or something like that. And so really what you need to do is just when you're pulling the data in, you just need to tag it appropriately. Say this is a page and this is the book. And as long as you can make those tags, then things will still work out. Um, maybe you need to do some work like separate the books versus the pages and stuff like that. But it's 100% it's doable. People in the community have done it. I know Don Richards from UTK has done it. Bethany Seeker from Amherst has done it. Um, so it can be done. Um, when I say you don't want to use the migrate CSV stuff, that will work if you're willing to export all of your stuff, get it into CSV format. Maybe you want to run it through OpenRefine or something like that. Um, and then you can use the CSV tooling, either one, right? So it's 100% it's, it's, it's possible. But what I meant was really, if you don't want any other secondary steps and you just want to like crack open your 7x and extract everything from it, this does all of that directly without you having to export all of the files and then pull all the files somewhere else and then you know yada yada yada. Essentially, it just points directly at your your 7x. That's that's really all I meant by that. 